In November, you released Reflection of Youth. Uh, how was the experience of releasing your first album? What does it mean to you? Well, it means a lot because I've been working towards it for a long time. And I've been working on these tunes for a long time. And to sort of let go of these emotions and let go of that chapter of my life felt really good. How did the people respond to this album so far? Pretty well. I mean, critically, it's been really well acclaimed. Um, Rough Trade has been welcoming it with open arms and I've been and reviewed in several music magazines with good reviews and went on tour supporting Ghost Word and now I'm going to go on tour supporting Mitski, this American artist. So yeah, so far so good. I assume that moving to London was a decision to fulfill your needs as a musician. What are the pros and the cons of living here in London as, a, as an artist? The pros are that it, the music scene in London is very diverse and it's a lot of places you can play and it's it's very welcoming to all types of genres. The con is that it's expensive. You know, for any artist to live in London is hard because it's a very expensive city. And also a con with London is that because it's so much art and because it's so much music. Uh, so I guess that's the con, but that sort of, yeah, it sort of balances out. What does it feel to be representing your country in a place that you are living now? Yeah, it feels, it feels great. I mean, it's nice to be welcomed in here and what they're doing here is quite cool, so. Yeah, it feels nice to be. I guess being representing my country feels quite big, but yeah, well, you know. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Your music has been compared to Pishy Herbie's one. What do you think about it? How do you how do you take it? Well, she's my idol, so I don't care. That's great for me. I mean, I love her, so to be compared with her is amazing. Det är god historia, eller det är jävligt hip historia. Så nu är Oliva. Oh my God. Är du med? We are going to watch Going West tonight. But before that, I would like to know about yourself. I know you are a self-taught filmmaker. So I got two questions related to that. Um, the first one is, how did you make that decision? And the second one, even though you are a self-taught filmmaker, you still have to learn from someone. I mean, so who is your inspiration? Who did you learn from? You know, I started out making films when I was eight or nine years old. And I was always determined to go to film school. Uh, but then I didn't get into film school when I was 19, which is quite young. But uh, I applied for the National Film School in Norway. And they, they thought I was too young, which I guess I was. And then I, you know, I continued to make short films and I got funding for more for short films. So in the end, I didn't need to go to film school because I just made films uh, instead and learned from that. So I guess my you know, the people I've worked with throughout the years have been my, you know, inspiration and also my, my mentors in a way. And also, of course, by watching movies and my, my big idols in a way is, is people like Martin Scorsese and Michael Haneke and um, P.T. Anderson and David Lean, learning from that. That's inspiring. Yes. Great. One of your short films, Thanks for Dancing, released yeah. in 2015, yeah. uh, won many awards. Um, how important was this for you? Was it a breaking point in your career in some way? No, well, not that movie, actually. I, I made a film called The Devil's Ballroom uh, in 2012, which, which I guess was my breakthrough because that also won a lot of awards. Um, and I made a couple of feature films between those films. So, but Thanks for Dancing did really well and it's still being, you know, screened at film festivals around the world. And that's, that's you know, it's very nice. It's great. Sometimes you shoot uh, on film rather than digital. Yeah. Why? Well, it, it depends on the story and, you know, when it's set, but I shooting on film on 35 mil and, and 16 mil since I was 16 years old. And, and it's something special for me also in terms of the look of it. Of course, it's the style that it's look and also in terms of the working method, because you have to be more focused shooting on film. How do you come up with a new story for a, for a new film? You, 
your creative process? Yeah, you? well, it depends. I, I tend to, to get new ideas when I need them. So if I'm in production or if I'm working on a new film, I don't get the ideas. But when I'm, you know, done with a film, I travel or I, you know, walk out the street and stuff. It, I, I get ideas from, you know, just by by thinking and watching things and just, you know, like pops in my head. So it's very, it's it's a bit, and also I, sometimes I, I I dream new films. <laughs> when you wake up, yeah, the, the story is still good yeah. as yeah. as in, in a dream. Yeah, yeah well, if, if, I, if, if I remember it, it's good. You have to work anyway, but yeah. I suppose, yeah, great. So tell us about going west. What what is it about? Well, it's a father-son story. It's they they recently lost their mother or his wife, mother, uh, and they are, you know, they have to find each other again in a way. Like they have to go to come together uh, and and reestablish the family. So they go on this trip to uh, to the west coast of Norway in order to honor her because she was a really good quilter. She made these blankets. So they, you know. They decide to go to the west coast to to like honor her at the the championship being held there. So it's but it's a it's a comedy and they they're meeting a lot of people throughout the film that uh, reflects them and also makes them think and you know yeah. So it's a comedy but with a message or with yeah, absolutely. Hey, that's a huge party with cocaine that comes with a sailboat at 12, and then we have to be ready for the place. Oh, it's good. I'm trying to get it done.